welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. This week, we take a break off pressing world issues to focus on Nigeria's relations with one of her biggest trading partners, India. Ever since diplomatic relations were established between the two countries in 1958, they've become more warm and friendly without contentious issues. In fact, India is one of the few countries Nigeria has maintained relations with that have not broken over time. In January this year, the two marked 60 years of diplomatic relations and have been working hard towards preserving and enhancing cultural relations. Recently, India said it has become Nigeria's largest trading partner. My colleague, Maokwe Ogun Yusuf, had a chat with the High Commissioner to Nigeria, Naga Bushana Reddy, in Abuja, about present relations and the future. Your Excellency, Naga Bushana Reddy, welcome to Diplomatic Channel. Thank you very much, Maokwe. Thank you. Well, so right now, Nigeria and uh, India's relations have been on for a while. In fact, before Nigeria's independence, since 1958, Nigeria established diplomatic relations with Nigeria. And there's always talk about uh, one of the reasons why we have relations is also to boost bilateral trade. There's always this competition between India and China. China claims that it is Nigeria's largest trading partner. India says it is Nigeria's largest trading partner. Do you feel any pressure between, uh, you know, with China in terms of competing for Nigeria's attention, so to speak? At the outset, let me uh, state that uh, we are in a very momentous period of our bilateral engagement, uh, which is, uh, as you rightly mentioned, it is the uh, 60th year of diplomatic engagement. Uh, to be more precise, it was in uh, November 2018 that India opened a diplomatic house in Lagos and thereafter uh, there was no looking back in terms of our bilateral engagement. Uh, then uh, in terms of our own uh, leadership, in terms of our own, uh, the entire canvas of our bilateral relations is, is very vast. Uh, in that context, I think uh, uh, every country uh, has its own uh, core strengths and there are uh, areas in which uh, Nigeria offers uh, for countries to come and engage. Uh, ours in, our, uh, in my view uh, is, has been a very comprehensive engagement. Uh, it is not one just, it is not one off relationship of just trade and commerce. Uh, when I say this is simply because uh, historically uh, as well as in the, in the, in the immediate uh, era preceding the independence of our two countries. We have marched together to fight against colonialism. Uh, we held our hand uh, together in, in uh, articulating our views, uh, both in the United Nations and other platforms. So as a result, um, and more importantly, uh, if I may say so, the Indians who have been engaging with Nigeria, uh, it's over 100 years now. Uh, coming to the bilateral engagement, uh, particularly trade and investment, uh, well, we are relying on the trade statistics that uh, to, uh, which have been provided by the Indian side. Uh, our bilateral trade is last year, when I say we are talking of uh, April 2017 till March 2018, uh, it is 11.76 billion US dollars, uh, of which uh, 9.5 billion dollars is uh, the the what do you call Niger India's imports of uh, Nigeria uh, and only 2.6 uh, billion dollars, 2.26 billion dollars is uh, what India exports. There's a huge trade deficit uh, no. as a result of which where Nigeria is at its great advantage. So, but I think um, it has never been uh, a, an issue of concern to us because uh, we believe that uh, we, as I said at the very beginning, we have our own core strengths which we tend to take advantage of. Uh, in advancing our engagement. I do not think uh, it will be appropriate to, to, for my side to say that we are in competition with anyone. I guess that is uh, and in a globalized world we are competing, everyone is competing with against other. But Nigeria offers uh, enough, I would say, opportunities for uh, countries to engage. Mm. Uh, but, you know, what are the areas on, that India is leveraging on? Because even though you have a huge trade deficit in terms of your relations with Nigeria, you know, what are the areas? Because you, you seem to refer to the fact that in India is benefiting from some other areas. What areas are those? Well, uh, let me just at the beginning of this question, I mean, and my answer say, Compared to the year before, 2016-17, because we take the financial year as what I described earlier, 
uh, we have a 25 percent increase in the overall two way bilateral trade. Uh, it is a significant uh, uh, increase. Uh, partly it has to do with uh, the confidence that the Indian industry uh, had with Nigeria uh, and Nigerian economy. Uh, now, coming back to your specific question about which sectors, uh, if I may name some of them uh, for Indian, India's exports have been into pharmaceuticals, uh, engineering goods, uh, particularly uh, machinery coming into Nigeria. Uh, then you have uh, products such as uh, automobiles, uh, agricultural machinery, uh, then uh, articles of iron and steel, plastics. So, there is a whole range of uh, uh, about 7 to 10 of this uh, which constitute about 80 to 90 percent of bilateral trade uh, or rather India's exports to Nigeria which are in uh, sectors where there is certain advantage uh, which India has. Uh, yes, it is true that uh, the, we have not been able to provide to the extent that we could and this is where the engagement that uh, we are trying to advance at the government to government level uh, so that we can find more and more areas of complementarity that exists mm. and take advantage of. It is interesting, in, I mean you talk about trade. One of the things that you know some people might also mention is the fact that you have quite a bit of Indian investments here. Uh, perhaps there is a preference you know to uh, do some manufacturing here in Nigeria as opposed to making it in India and bringing it here to Nigeria. Well, I must say here uh, over the years Indian uh, industry, Indian companies have been consistently investing in Nigeria in different forms. Uh, if uh, the kind of figure that we have uh, based on uh, sort of uh, over a period of time, uh, it comes to about uh, 10 billion US dollars has been the India's investment uh, in Nigeria. For example, uh, if you look at Airtel, uh, one of the leading service providers in the country is an Indian investment. Uh, similarly, we have a number of automotive companies now started investing in the country. Let me come to the drive that the government of federal government of Nigeria as well as the states in Nigeria are very keen on after the ERGP, this economic recovery and growth plan, plan yeah. uh, which seeks to have higher local content and uh, with greater drive to have make in Nigeria concept. I mean this is something even we are promoting in India uh, as you would have heard. Uh, is actually the Prime Minister of Nigeria, uh, India has always been, uh, uh, is a Mr. Narendra Modi uh, has been very started this program called Make in India, uh, where we are trying to take advantage of what we have in India. Similarly, we believe that wherever we can support this initiative to the extent uh, we can, uh, that would be the real contribution that uh, a country can make. Uh, in development of other countries. Well, more local investments by Indian companies here in Nigeria means that you come more in contact with the local people. How would you say that they have found the environment in which they do business, especially uh, with relationships with Indians, Nigerians mm -hmm. and Indians in the same, would you say that they have been hospitable? Have, been, have there been issues where you have had to step in to intervene, especially with the Nigerian government? Uh, if I may answer this in a slightly different manner, so far uh, we have not had occasions where uh, these were any complaints have come to the Indian High Commission uh, wherein we had to directly intervene. Now, having said this, uh, we have over 135 Indian companies who are based, uh, which are based in, uh, in Nigeria in different parts of Nigeria. According to one statistic, you know, which is again said by one of the uh, Nigerian uh, academics that uh, possibly the Indian companies are employing the second largest manpower in Nigeria after the federal government of Nigeria. Uh, over a period of time, uh, uh, I think Indian companies have been uh, traditionally uh, in, terms of, in terms of their relationship with the employees has been generally good because uh, otherwise we would have certainly heard from the at least the government agencies here uh, informing the High Commission of any such complaints. Mm. Uh, let's move outside uh, the Nigeria right now and move more to the Asian continent. Only recently, U.S. President Donald Trump and uh, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un, you know, had this meeting in Singapore and they also signed an agreement on nuclearization. Now, India has nuclear powers, isn't that right? Uh, so, have you ever felt threatened about North Korea's 
belligerence, it was same, seeming belligerence in that particular region. Have you ever thought about it? Well, India, to start with, uh, this particular agreement uh, that has been uh, arrived at between the United States of America and uh, DPRK, mm -hmm. North Korea, I think Indian government has welcomed it uh, because uh, it is perhaps, uh, it, is, it is the step in the right direction uh, towards uh, total denuclearization of North Korea because uh, that uh, there is, a, it, it, though it is ne not necessarily in the India's immediate neighborhood, but it is in the extended neighborhood of India. And we have always had concerns of, uh, of a kind which could potentially, potentially uh, result in instability in the region uh, and thereby uh, having an indirect impact on our engagement uh, with, with the other countries in the region. Uh, to put it this way that we have, we have very close diplomatic ties with DPRK. In fact, our own Minister uh, of State for Foreign Affairs travelled earlier uh, in this year to, to Pyongyang uh, with, with a view to have a conversation. And uh, we have been very open about it. It is not that we, uh, we talk about it and we say that uh, it is in the larger collective interests of the region and in, of the Asia and the world at large that uh, we see uh, as sooner that total denuclearization of DPRK takes place. In 2017, Nigeria and India agreed to work together on space technology, uh, which is one of the technological areas, uh, apart from um, IT, uh, information technology, where India has made a lot of advancement and is also making some investments here in Nigeria. Uh, you know, not much has been heard about that agreement since it was signed in 2017, in terms of how, what work they're doing on space technology. Uh, well, I think, uh, I think it requires a clarification uh, because uh, we have had uh, discussions on areas where we would like to start cooperating in the space science and technology. Uh, we are yet to reach a stage where we have signed an agreement. Uh, however, the progress that has been made includes A, uh, specifically to, uh, two dimensions we are looking at. First is the ability, uh, uh, it, it is in the launching technologies which are required. And the second is utilization of the space uh, data uh, for various uh, utilities. For example, be it in, uh, it, it's essentially the remote sensing data, which is used for developmental purposes. On both these platforms, uh, for example, uh, let me take the later first. Uh, in the remote sensing technologies, we've been able to send some of the scientists of Nigeria uh, to India for short-term training programs. Uh, uh, and particularly in some of the very uh, uh, sort of reputed uh, remote sensing uh, training centers in India. And uh, we have extended an invitation uh, for uh, the, pre the, the Director General of the NASTA to, to visit India. Uh, number three, we have exchanged, uh, we are in the process of uh, concluding an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, uh, wherein both sides uh, which is the Indian Space Research Organization and NASA have uh, reflected on it and provided for what areas they would like to cooperate. And I am very hopeful that during the year uh, we could conclude the negotiations on this text. Uh, here, as you would have perhaps noticed, that uh, India has come the f uh, has completed the full cycle of entire space science and technology. Uh, we have now uh, capacities to launch satellites, manufacture satellites and manufacture the launch vehicles. Uh, you would have heard that we have created a small world record recently. 134 satellites were launched in one uh, go. You know, one vehicle has carried 134 satellites, out of uh, which uh, a number of European countries have their own satellites on it. Wow. Uh, so in a sense that uh, we are very um, happy that this technology has taken us to the next uh, level of uh, sort of taking advantage of benefits of and it is the spirit of this particular technology being offered to Nigeria is with a view to share it under our south-south cooperation where we feel that uh, the, the Nigeria is so, so rich and abundant of abundance of natural resources they can be best uh, tapped uh, if you have the appropriate and, and the right data and which for which the space uh, technology can be an important tool uh, and we are by ourselves benefiting out of that. So we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Diplomatic Channel, Your Excellency Naga Bushina Reddy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. When we come back after the break, once again, Europe is stuck trying to avert another migrant disaster. Stay with us.